Haraku Mashio, the founder of a demi-human village, wakes up from a dream where he dies of a fatal disease in his previous life. He starts his usual day of managing his farm. He was reborn by the Earth God, who felt sorry for his miserable and painful life. He wanted to be a farmer because he enjoyed watching farming shows in the hospital. The god gave him a strong body and the omnipotent farming tool, a magic device that can create any tool he needs and never gets tired. He found himself in a remote forest and chose a big tree as his farm site. With the tool, he made a well, a camp and a field. He was surprised when crops grew without seeds. After some time, he saved two wolves, Kiro and Yugi, who had four puppies that night. He kept them as guards against monsters and harvested his first crop. Meanwhile, a curious woman traveler heard stories about the dangerous death forest and went to explore it. The Earth God regrets sending Haraku to the forest of death, but hopes a monster will kill him so he can bring him back to life again. Haraku learns he can control the seeds the tool plants with his mind and grows more crops. Before winter, the wolves bring a giant spider who makes warm clothes for living in Haraku's tree. He calls her Zabutin. Haraku feels lonely in winter, especially when the wolves pair up and Zabutin returns with 20 kids. In spring, he finds a vampire girl named Rue in the forest, who becomes an adult after he gives her his blood. She is a medicine expert and likes his crops, which are new to this world. She ran away from nobles who wanted her work. They get along well, and Haraku invites her to live with him. She says yes, and they get engaged. Haraku plants herbs for Rue's research. Meanwhile, another woman traveler is searching for the death forest. Tia, an angel, comes looking for Rue and is shocked to see her married to Haraku. She says Rue is wanted for destroying a town, but Rue says it was fair since a noble locked her up there. Rue asks Tia to stay with them, and she enjoys their farming life. The wolves have more puppies, so Haraku makes the farm bigger. Some of Zamutin's kids leave, but the rest live on Haraku's fruit trees. Tia brings seven girls to the farm who are high elves that need a new home to grow their clan. The elves have many skills, like building, making metal and cooking. Haraku fears the demon lord who owns the forest will be mad at him for taking the land. But Ru says he won't mind. Haraku wants to make the waterways around the farm better. Haraku gets a monster queen bee from Zabutin and makes a shed for her to make honey. Haraku and the elves make a canal and a lake for water and fish. With more water, Haraku makes his first rice field and uses the rice to make onajiri with fish. Then, they make a bathhouse, with another lake filled with slimes to clean the water from the bats. Haraku has a bath, but he is not relaxed because nine naked ladies join him in the bath. Five more elven girls come to the farm, so Haraku plans to build more houses. The elves want to have babies soon, which scares Haraku because he is the only man with many women. Shiro the wolf says he is thankful to Haraku for giving him and his family a home. He thinks Haraku, who lives in Death Forest and has so many wives, must be more than a normal human. Haraku's house is made bigger with rooms for him, Ru and Tia, and a big room for everyone to eat together. Haraku doesn't notice the hidden double bed. Haraku grows spices and makes curry with bread. Ru and T use cilantro as charms against Haraku's wolves who hate the smell, because they remember the wolves hurting them when they first came. Winter comes so they store food and wood. Haraku feels useless because he can't use magic, but Lee says he is amazing for living in Death Forest. Winter keeps them inside so Haraku shows them board games, where Ru and Tia compete without breaking anything. Haraku is shocked the wolves can play too, with Kiro beating Ru at chess and Haraku at Manjong. Spring comes but before they can farm Zabutin warns them of a big wyvern coming to the farm. Haraku's farming tool becomes a magic spear and he kills the wyvern. The demon lord's generals and Drime the dragon king are scared and wonder who lives in Death Forest. Haraku plants grapes to make wine. God is scolded by his daughter, the agriculture goddess, who says the farming tool is a copy of Grime the god's spear, and Haraku can use it because God gave him a very healthy body. Zabutin and the wolves find another vampire who is Rue's sister Flora. She is a researcher and likes Haraku's idea of fermenting things that make wine, miso and tofu, so she joins the farm with cows and many ogre maids. Tia brings more angels and lizard men who bring chickens. More elves come, all wanting babies. Haraku worries about being the only man. The farm grows bigger and Haraku calls it the Great Tree Village and has a feast where everyone makes him the village mayor. Demon General Bezel talks to Haraku who gives the demon lord 10% of his crops as a yearly tax. Bezel agrees but tells Generals Gratz and Randon he was scared of what guards Haraku's village, Vampire Ru, Angel Tia, and a big demon spider. Dragon King Drime also comes to the village. Haraku knows as mayor he needs to make friends, so they make an embassy for visitors. Haraku also teaches the villagers who are guests and who are enemies. Their next visitors are beastmen from Howling Village, who mine and hunt and want to trade with Haraku, metal and glass for food crops. Drime helps them trade for wine. Later, 20 beastmen want to live in Great Tree Village, all young women. 
Haraku says no and asks for men too, but they send boys who can't marry anyone for 10 years. Sina and the other beastmen get used to village life, but Haraku still feels bad about not having magic. He beats a grappling bear and a bloody viper outside the village, which he makes for another feast. With Flora's help Haraku makes mayonnaise and miso. Then, dwarves led by Donovan come to the village to trade wine for making whiskey. The dwarves stay in the village too. Haraku hopes they might marry, but they only like women with beards. Two dragons come and Haraku almost kills one until Gucci, Drime's servant says they are Drime's wife Grafaloon and daughter Lastus Moon. Grafaloon tells Lastus Moon to live in the village as a diplomat, so Haraku won't be their enemy. Haraku gives Lastus Moon the job of handling all diplomacy, which Demon General Bezel learns on a food buying trip. Scared Haraku now controls dragons. He sends his daughter Florum to spy on the village. Florum sees the village's army can fight the demon army and hears from Lastus Moon their leader Haraku is a human who almost killed Grafaloon. Florum stays longer than planned even though she is always afraid of Haraku. A slime who drank a whole barrel of wine is forgiven by the villagers. As the weather gets colder, Haraku craves some seafood. His friends Florum and Lastus Moon find a merchant named Michael who can trade fish for their crops. Michael also wants to be Haraku's exclusive business partner and handle all his deals with the outside world. Haraku agrees, trusting Michael's good intentions. But Michael is actually scared of Haraku, as we see in some funny flashbacks. Another dragon shows up and challenges Haraku to a fight. Haraku wins and finds out she is Hakuren, the childish older sister of Drime. Drime tells him that Hakuren was jealous of Lastus Moon because she thought she married Haraku. Hakuren is still single and lonely. Haraku makes her fix the damage she caused. Hakuren gets interested in board games and drags Haraku into a game of Mahjong where the loser has to strip. The girls watch as Haraku lose his clothing. Bezel hears about Hakuren's arrival and wants to quit his job. His boss General Randon is afraid of her too. The demon lord Gilgardo is more worried about his daughter Yuri, who is acting rebellious. Hakuren decides to stay in the village without working, but Haraku teaches her a lesson. She becomes the village teacher instead. Haraku meets some Lamia ladies who live in a dungeon. Some fire puppies stole their treasure, but Haraku apologizes and returns it. The Lamias start trading their dungeon loot for food. They also help deliver goods to other villages. Yuri thinks Florum is a prisoner of Haraku and plans to attack the Great Tree Village. Yuri wants to attack the village, but she is tricked by three dumb demon nobles, Rosalind, Clackace and Roju. Florum knows their plan and secretly sets up a trap for them. The Lamia ladies defeat Yuri's army without killing anyone. Florum makes Yuri and the three nobles live in the village and work hard to make up for their mistake. She doesn't tell Haraku about their invasion because it would cause trouble. The three nobles try to run away, but they are stopped by the fire puppies and the spider demons. They end up helping Florum with the village's money problems and become the town hall trio. Yuri learns the truth about the village and feels sorry for what she did. She goes back home happy. The three nobles stay in the village because they like it better than the demon world. Kelgardo is puzzled by Yuri's sudden change and thinks she has a boyfriend. Five elves who can use fire magic come to the village and make pottery. They are led by Ya. The trio tries to seduce Haraku, but Florum stops them. The elves want to hunt a bloody viper in a dungeon because its meat can help them get pregnant. Winter arrives, and Rue gets sick and stays in bed. Sina thinks Rue is having Haraku's baby. Rue baby is close to being born and Haraku is busy with his village duties. He works on the farm, visits everyone, keeps the village safe and trains for fights. A man shows up who is Vargreif, the vampire progenitor in Rue and Flora's grandpa. He is 4,000 years old and very rare because vampires usually make babies by turning humans into vampires. Vargreif saw Haraku's statue of the god who gave him a new life and says he met God too before he became a vampire. He doesn't remember much because he erases his memories every few hundred years to stay sane. Haraku makes him another statue of God and Vargreif gives it to the temple of the god of creation. The priests are amazed by how it looks like God and they say they will protect the great tree village. Vargreif sends the village a fancy grand piano to celebrate Rue's baby. The trio are scared to play it so Haraku buys them a cheaper one to learn on. But he wishes he didn't when their playing keeps him awake at night. Rue is having a baby and the village stops drinking alcohol until she can drink again. Haraku is nervous and can't stay in the house while Rue is in labor. He walks around the farm until Rue has their son Alfred, a half-vampire. Haraku is happy to be a dad. Haraku makes great tree coins for the village to use instead of trading goods. He gives three coins to everyone, but they don't know how much they are worth. They have a big feast for Alfred's birth and the dwarves make a special wine for him to drink when he grows up. Bezel gives up on fighting the great tree village and wants to be friends. Kelgardo gets angry and thinks Bezel wants to marry Yuri to Haraku. Haraku gets many letters from people who want to live in the village because they are in trouble. He decides to build another village nearby for them. Great Tree Village 2 is what it would be called. 
The last number of your like is who powers you get. Comment who you got. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more anime recaps.